Hey everybody, it's Steve with Sky194 and I appreciate you taking the time to visit and check out my video. And we're just doing a real quick uh, test race here. So let's get started. I'm in the Porsche, the 2018 Porsche GT3R. Asked for a setup for some help. Um, don't race with the 2018 cars too often, so something different. Oh, yeah, I, gotta, I guess it would help if I started it. Aston Martin up there, V12. Got Matt Campbell right in front of me. Awesome car. Love the livery on that car. Of course, I'm in the Manti Racing Porsche. One of my favorite liveries. <laughs> did you see that? Man, did he get into a tank slapper. Clear on the right. Man, he, wow. Oh, man, did you see that? <laughs> Bouncing all over the place. Looks like he needs to do some Motec on that car. Looks like AI is at 100, aggression's 100. Of course, I have lots of fuel. Again, you got to be careful when you're getting, you know, especially this Porsche. But you got to be careful when you get really up behind somebody. Really messes up the balance of the car. It does the, all the other Porsche too, but this one's even worse. Kind of reminds me of the uh, AMG Evo and the the uh, non Evo. Same kind of thing. Doesn't have as much front end uh, downforce, so it really messes it up when you get like this. You're right behind somebody. You gotta just really be careful. Time. So we'll have to find out and see if that's something it was me or the car. I tried the aggressive. Didn't work out too good. Also, this it just seems like the, this Porsche has a little bit more torque or a little bit more. The gear ratios might be a teeny bit different because you 
Lucy's third gear and those other corners back there. I don't know if I thought he's second in the newer Porsche, but. that one because that was just messed up. So let's we'll have to see how it goes. I get a good clean lap. I'm trying to get ahead of him so I can see if I can get back up to this other Audi. But That's not helping matters. sister car to this because it's got the opposite livery on it the green and the yellow are opposite and it's just really pretty too so i got both of 
both of them in uh, spark models. Okay, the leader is on the final lap now. Give it all you can. Gaining on the car ahead is number three. Well done, mate. You're the best. Better lap. Yeah, I was having problems back there going to Bruges, and this left-hander up here that always gives me problems with the with the aggressive. He was just giving me fits right here. And, I mean, you had to really tiptoe through here. Now I can, you know, go through there really hard. Handles really good going through here now. That's better, starting to get into a rhythm. So it should be running more like that. Alright, we had our best lap the last lap. So again, real happy with that. Let's go check that out as soon as it gets done. Um, finished fifth. I can't remember where I started sixth, I think, but we just got had a couple issues in the beginning. Probably just driver, but gotta love that V12 Aston. I mean that thing sound of that is epic but you know I love the new Aston too I love both of them they're just great looking sound and everything so yeah let's go look at that last lap and just go over here a second let's see how the car handles see if it's okay Again, I started with 85 liters because I mean, he's doing this career mode and you know doing a six-hour race or something. So I mean, he's going to have to run heavier fuel loads, but I mean, it'd be fine if, whether you have 100 or whatever you want. Now, you can hear it scraping a teeny bit, so it does scrape through there. So in the first lap or so, you want you might you can't probably hold it wide open up all, all the way through Rouge, but you can after that. Speed isn't that bad for the Porsche. I mean, it's about right there. Where its forte is, it really is drivable and handles, like I said, a Perouge. You know, if you want to be safe, you can just lift a little bit, make sure you get through there until you get the hang of it. You know, it's really challenged to get through here at a decent pace, and I think it does really good through here. Again, these next couple corners you want to take in third. 
Go through in third here. Motor's got, you know, good mid-range, really. I mean, it's not that bad, so just, you know, carry the corner speed, go through there. Same thing with that corner back to the behind there. You can hold it wide open all the way from here on out to the hairpin. So, or the uh, chicane, I'm sorry, chicane. But yeah, I'm wide open. And it's, it handles it easy. You always tell when a car is understeering, it, it'll run wide there real bad if it's understeering, and it, this doesn't. Very small inputs. Beautiful car, and that was a 220.70. So, again, that was my fast, and that's no drafting, no nothing. Um, but I was running mid-220s, uh, 225, you know, 220.5, 6, 7, things like that. So that's about where it's supposed to be, especially with that fuel load. Um, probably could have done that earlier if I didn't get, you know, make some mistakes. But, again, it's, you know, it's a solid driving car. Um, that's what he wanted, you know, since he's driving a six-hour endurance here at Spa. Um this will do it. Um, I mean, as far as being drivable, love that main tie racing car. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, look at the timetables. And again, I mean, all the fast laps were there at the end. But yeah, I mean, I went out these other times and just trying to hard get into back into a rhythm. Um, but yeah, I think it's really good. Yeah, start mixing it up. And, you know, drafting, I was drafting really well with the Audi and the other cars. So even though it's a Porsche, you can, you know, if you're behind somebody, you can you can draft up with them, no problem. Um, let's go over to setup. We got 25.2 on the front tires and 26 on the left rear and 26.1 on the right rear. Um, suggestion. Since there's such a difference with these long straightaways, you need to keep them up near 28 at the peak. So you got to be, you know, when you're when you're coming up to turn one, it needs to be at like 28 because after that you have a lot of long straight, you know, you got the real long straightaway and things like that, and you don't want it to get too cool. So you know, tires that get too, you know, the pressure to go down. So again, you want to um, keep it the best you can as far as adjusting your tire pressures so it stays right around 28. I mean, you don't want to really go over 28. But you really want to go right up to it. So, and then after that, it comes back down. You know, time it comes back down, the pressures come down. You'll be back in the corners again. So, that's the idea anyway. Uh, the toe is negative 0.1 on the front with the camber at negative 3.5, caster at 9.4. The toe on the rear is a positive 0.1 with the camber at negative 2.9. Now, this is drastically different than the aggressive. Aggressive had a lot less caster, a lot more negative camber. It was maxed out at like. Four, negative four um so it was a lot different um but again you know it was really tippy toey a lot different setup than this so um harder to drive in my opinion um and actually I, i'd really try to get faster with it to see if i could get faster with that than, th than this set than my own setup but i couldn't um electronics was three three Fuel, we had 85 liters. That's what I went off with. And the number two brake pads. So, again, I went with the number two brake pads because he's going to have a six-hour race. So, you, obviously, number ones won't work. So, um, I mean, you could use the number ones in qualifying if you want to. So, you could do that. But for the race, I just went ahead and did the setup with the number twos because that's what he's going to be using. And that will be good for the whole, the whole six hours. So, again, I, that was with those. Mechanical. Got four on the anti roll bar, um, 52 on the brake bias, and you can go down to 51, probably even 50. Steering's 14. Springs on the front are 133,000 with a bump stop rate of 800 and a bump stop range of 3. And on the rear, the springs are 167,000 with a bump stop rate of 1,000 and a bump stop range of 12. Anti roll bar is 2 in the back, and the preload and the diff is 120. Um, if you, you can change that, between 100 and 120 is optimal, as from, from what I could tell. But I'm trying to keep it off the TC 
as much as I can and without affecting the handling. So again, um, I raised it up until it still hits the TC a teeny bit, but it's not real bad. Uh, shocks, we got five, six, two, three on the front and one, one, two, five on the rear. Um, I could show MoTeC and we can go over that. Um, let's see what we have. Which, again, we'll have to see because some of these things you don't want to mess with too much because it does make it, it really helped make a difference because they were way, way different also. And I think it helps with some of the bumps and going through um, a rouge and handling that, you know, the, the left and right and all the, you know, the left, right and left. Okay. So, yeah, it's a little little off. Let's see what we got. Let's see if it went off. No, it went off of that. So, let's see here. So, let's go off of this. Um, again, it's really hard to get a... It's really high there. So, we need to bring this down. So, I guess we'll do that. Um... It's 49.6. That's 50.4. So, again, not far off. But we'll bring this down just one click. Because um, it's not too bad. This is 48. 7. 49 something. This is 50.7. So, again, not, it's a little little off. Um, mainly, let's see. The rebound. We'll just knock this back one. Um, you can see it goes kind of ramps up really fast right there. So maybe bring this down a little bit. Um, this here is on the bump side needs to come down. So we'll go ahead and bring that down. Just a click. Because it's still right just barely over 50. So we'll just, again, and this one's not even 50. So we'll just bring it down one click. Keep it a little bit more less drastic of a jump try to get a little bit more equal anyway still not equal but at least closer so that's not too bad there um on the back here we're looking at 48 6 um that's not too bad really we could go up maybe a little bit here on the fast rebound or the uh yeah the fast rebound here i'll make one click maybe that's it i'm not gonna do any more than that and this is 51. We can't really much mess with that because it's already pretty much maxed out. And this is 47.9. So, again, it could come up a little bit here. And that's it. I wouldn't want to go up any higher. So, we'll just go one click. That's it. Um, try to get as much as we can. This is, again, a little bit too high. It's like 52. But I've already got it as low as it can go. So, that's, again, one click here. You know, basically one click on each corner. But, um... Nothing drastic, so I know it's close, and by far, uh, a lot closer than what it was with the aggressive. So, um, I, I was it's definitely a lot, lot better there than it was in in the in that. So, but that's what you get with a custom setup compared to just the uh, standard stuff. So, I mean, they were okay. I can go through it, but I mean, I was, I mean, I had to really tiptoe through the double left. I had to tiptoe lift break early and also I'm going to Perouge I had to lift you couldn't hold a Rouge flat out all the way up Rouge you just you just couldn't do it but with the less wing as it had you could have the same speed or I think it was about a mile an hour faster than this my setup so the aggressive was like a mile an hour faster because it has a lot less wing than the my setup so but lap time wise I mean I was like I think it was like six or seven tenths. So, and it's not just that; it was the wear. Front tires were a lot, you know, more wear. Um, which this, if you look, I mean, look at we did a short little race and and no graining, no nothing. A um, little bit more wear on the front than I like compared to the rear, but that's just his Porsche. I mean, you can't get away from it because the way the front end is, it gets more wear because it just has to work harder. Than like the newer Porsche, and that's one of the big differences. So again, th that's why I say with this car, 
you know, usually it, you know, the time you got to really take care of these front tires. So again, I would recommend dialing this brake bias as soon as you get, you know, a few laps in. I would dial the brake bias steadily get down to like 51 and then to 50 to try to get the rear tires to work more to try to keep the wear balance uh, as close as you can. That's what I would do. And you got enough wings, so it's not like you don't have to worry about that. Plus, this is going to go up. That's another thing. You know, this, uh, you know, as you can see, uh, we got 62 in the front, and you have to bring it up in the front because um, it's just, it, even now, it just touches a little bit. So you have to raise the front, even though I don't want to, I have to because it upsets the car. But of course, the only way it's going to go is up because the fuel is in the front of the car, fuel is right here. So when once that fuel starts coming off, the rate the the front's going to come up. This is going to stay the same. The rear is going to stay the same. It's not going to move. So you're going to get an understeer issue because the front of the car is going to come up. This is going to come up four clicks when you're down near empty from 85 liters. So it's going to be up like 66 in the front. So it's definitely going to change the handling. So you might even have to go to 49 or 48 to get the car to rotate. But again, be careful. Make sure you're braking straight and keep your trail braking until you can figure out how it's reacting, you know, limited to on your trail braking. Um, the rear wing's 14, and the brake ducts are 2 and 2. And again, when you see the temperature's 23 degrees. So again, they're good for between 22, 24. You should be fine right here. And it just adjust the tire pressures accordingly. But I keep the brake ducts down because otherwise it's even more of a spread between the pressures and it's bad enough as it is so again um just depending upon what the temperature is in that race i mean especially if it's at nighttime or cool um but this is a good overall package you get there's a lot of adjustability in this that you can do a lot of different things whether you have inclement weather um track might not be super grippy you have the advantage because you have a lot of grip um you know the car is forte is handling and also drivability. So you saw the other guys. I mean, they were jumping. I mean, those are AI, and it was they were bouncing all over the place. So again, I think that um, it's really a good package. And I hope if you you know whoever uses it, I hope you enjoy it. Um, but I think it's you know a solid driver package and definitely a good race endurance type package where you can just click the laps off and pretty much be you know right around there pretty much for most of the. Uh, most of the fuel stint. So again, um, I'll leave a link to this setup in the description. And of course, you know, watching the video, PayPal, um, watching the video, like I said, liking, subscribing, all that support. And I just want to say thank you very much for any of ever, you know, all of you that do either one or both or multiples or whatever. Um, it means a lot, you know, I appreciate it. So, um, I just, you know, my little channel, it, it really means a lot when I get a like, subscribe, commenting. Um, I love talking to all my sim racing friends. So, again, um, I do the best I can with these setups. And, you know, I'm always trying to make them a little bit better. And uh, so, hopefully, we'll keep going in the positive direction as far as making them better, more drivable. And then also trying to, always trying to get more performance out of it. So, again, I... Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and you come back and visit again really soon. See ya.